I think there's absolutely no doubt that Elizabeth was entirely responsible in its latter stages for the prosecution of Mary Queen of Scots and for her subsequent execution. And I think perhaps as an example of Elizabeth's capacities as an arch manipulator, this is the most outstanding of the reign. It was very, very important for Elizabeth to give the impression to the public that she almost had nothing to do with it, that she'd been obliged very, very much against her will to sign the death warrant for this woman who'd been a thorn in her government's side for 20 years. But when you look at the sources, when you look at the timing of the execution, of what happened to the warrant when Elizabeth puts her signature on it and the story she subsequently told, you see something very different. Um, it's only an opinion, but I, I think Elizabeth felt extremely um, conflicted about executing Mary, partly for personal reasons, because although she detested Mary, um, she thought she was a fool, frankly, um, a disgrace to her throne, she thought she was sexually incontinent. It's even been argued that she was jealous of Mary, who was far more beautiful and, and glamorous than she was. All of this may or may not be true. However, Elizabeth did feel a sense of, of, of sisterhood with her. They were fellow queens regnant. They were both women alone in a man's world, the occupiers of a fairly exalted and extraordinary position. So she may have felt a, a powerful degree of, of personal reluctance to execute Mary, but I think she recognised it as a political necessity from much, much earlier on than is often, um, often understood. It wasn't a question of um, when with Mary, it was simply a question of how to do it as quickly as possible. Um, her closest advisor, Cecil, had been pushing for Mary's death for years and years. I think Elizabeth wasn't reluctant to accede to this because she felt that Mary was fundamentally innocent. I think she wanted to wait until the climate was as propitious as possible, if that could ever be the, the case. And so what she did was, was masterly. It was very simple, but it was very clever. Um, she receives the death warrant. She dithers about. She signs it. She gives it to someone else to take to the correct official who's then going to transport it up to Fotheringay where Mary has been um, tried, ready for her execution. She then does a bit of double timing. She pretends that she's called it back, but in fact she hasn't. She never did. She had about three or four days where she could have stopped the execution and she created a, a complex sort of chasing game around Whitehall Palace whereby this mysterious warrant was always one step ahead of her supposedly eager personal messenger. And of course what happens is the warrant leaves London um, along with the axe hidden in a trunk which is going to be used to execute the Queen, the queen. at which point Elizabeth throws up her hands, has a huge temper tantrum, one of the more magnificent pieces of, of Elizabethan court theatre that one can perhaps imagine. She blames everybody within sight, she screams, she wails, she stamps her feet. Um, she even throws the poor, the poor chap who was supposed to have um, delivered the warrant back to her into the Tower of London. But this is all a huge feint. She knows, absolutely knows, that she wanted Mary dead. But it was very important to her to make sure that nobody thought that she was responsible for this. Now again, we can look at this in two ways. We can look at it from a personal point of view. Um, Elizabeth perhaps almost talked herself into the idea that she hadn't wished to sign the warrant because living with a cognitive dissonance would have been too much for her. But we also have to consider its implications politically. Firstly, this is a queen acquiescing in the death of another queen. Although Elizabeth's government had changed the law in order to make this possible, nonetheless it was a fairly alarming precedent for one of God's anointed to execute another of God's anointed. So it was important for that reason for Elizabeth to dissociate herself from um, from the execution. Secondly, she had to consider how it would be perceived by the other monarchs of Europe, by the world at large. She knew that she was already absolute anathema to her Catholic enemies in France and Spain. She knew that she would be despised, she knew that she would be seen as, as a tyrant, um, if not a sort of anti-Catholic terrorist. So again, expressing reluctance um, and, and ignorance of, of Mary's death was all part of her propaganda strategy. Um, but certainly looking at the way Elizabeth went about executing her, her kinswoman and her fellow queen, there's absolutely no, no doubt at all that ultimately it was she and she alone who was responsible.